I'm Jason Bidge Burnett. I'm here at the Archie Bray Foundation. I'm going to be doing a few videos for you all at home. Uh, today, I'm going to be demoing how to transfer these underglaze images off the paper and onto a leather hard plate like this. Um, if you don't know much about my work or what I do, here's an example of a finished plate glazed with an image transfer of uh, roosters. And if you'd like to know more about uh, the content, uh, the processes that I use, I also have a book out there called Graphic Clay. So let's begin. Um, the materials that you need for an image transfer process, first and foremost, we're going to need our screen printed image transfers. You can find this sort of product. Um, Honestly, the business that I work with is easletransfers.com. We hand screen print underglaze transfers. We have a stock um, stock pile. We also have tissue transfers that work on bisque, greenware, and bone dry pots. Now with the underglaze transfers, this is a process that you want to use when the clay still has some moisture in it. And we use the slip as a vehicle to transfer the image off the paper and onto the clay. Speaking of slip, I have my slip right here. I'm using a low fire clay body and I'm going to use a low fire slip. There are lots of slip recipes out there. I offer one that's called all purpose white slip. You can find that recipe in graphic clay. Um, you can also purchase it from time to time at easilytransfers.com. But honestly, there's a lot of white slip recipes out there and the important thing to do is always to test to make sure that that slip and that clay body they, they shrink together, they fit well, they can be problematic um, if you use different materials that are meant for different ranges and temperature when firing. We've all been there. I have been. So I've got my slip recipes. You can't tell when the slip is wet, but there are mason stains in the slip recipe. So when they get fired, that's how you're going to go from this sort of dull grayish tone in the background to something that's more vibrant, like a buttery yellow behind this rooster plate. So I've got my slips pre-mason stain and labeled, of course. And the particular tools that I love to use when transferring imagery onto plates or clay, Flarisol hairspray bottle. What's important about this is not just like any hairspray bottle or water bottle. This has a continuous mist, um, an atomizer that allows the water to be broken down. And so when I have to rehydrate my image transfer on the back and in the front, it's not putting puddles of pay, uh, water all over it. It evenly distributes that moisture. I also have my mud tools ribs. I use a yellow and a red mud tools rib. The shapes aren't always important. Um, I do, however, favor a yellow rib in this style because I like that I can get a little bit of a corner edge there and a variation of curves. The purpose of these two ribs um, when transferring is going to be the durometer of them. That's the measurement of hardness, flexibility. And I'll tell you why in a moment when I'm demoing, but the red is a bit softer, yellow is a little bit more on the abrasive um, burnishing side that I'm going to need. I have a couple style brushes here. Uh, soft tip bristle brushes. These are going to be really great for applying slip decoration and a wide, maybe one inch to two inch hockey brush. Um, this also allows for a beautiful distribution of slip onto a chocolate bar leather hard clay. And then for the final steps in decorating, I like to use a pin, just a regular pin, typically one that retracts because I like using the tip of the pin to um, make dots. You can use a fondant tool to create variation of lines. Uh, this fondant tool has dashes and polka dots to give you sort of like a stitched line uh, look. And then I use a Kemper tool. It's a cleanup tool. Um, it has two ends, one that's like a squared curved hook. But the part that I really appreciate is more of the blade. And with that blade, um, it's a little bit wider than an X-Acto knife. And so I can get some really beautiful drawn incised lines. I want my lines and my work to feel a little uh, tactile, um, not just a flat line, but something we're working with clay. I want something that's going to push the clay apart to not only establish a line, but you can feel even under the glaze. And then last but not least, um, I've already saved us a little bit at the time by getting a plate um, that has two coats of slip already on it. Now when I apply my slip onto the leather hard clay, 
this is already pre-formed and decorated um, with a slip on the bottom and two layers of slip on the top. I went about three coats of slip. Now, the slip that you use at home, you might have they may have different characteristics and traits, but with mine, I like to build up opacity. There's a couple artists out there that really play with the translucency to the opacity of slip. One artist that I admire, Shoko Teriyama, you can see where some of the red will come through the slip, giving it some life. I love building up the opacity. I want like this candy colored um, taffy softness when it comes to the slip. And something else that I like about the, the thickness of slip is that you can build with it. Uh, it's, it's a clay material, it's a clay body, it's just watered down. So if, if I'm not doing an image transfer on it, I love that this slip is thick enough, almost like a warm milk or like a milkshake left in a warm car all day long, that sort of viscosity. So, I like to, I can brush it around. Um, I can see those brush marks, but three coats um, reassure me that I'm building up that color that I want. So got my slips ready, two coats on here. Let's go ahead and add another. I'm gonna add this orange slip and give it a shake. And I've already applied two coats. Now, the, the thing that is important here too is you want your clay, your object, to be a chocolate bar leather hard. What is that stage? Some of you may have a different term for it, so I'm gonna describe it. There's, you, yes, you have wet, you have leather hard, and you have bone dry. We're looking in that spectrum between the leather hard to the bone dry part. We want something where if I was to ins draw a line into the clay, I could snap it in half. And that would be something like a Hershey's chocolate bar. Something that would have a clean break, um, but there's still moisture in it, it's still soft. The chocolate bar leather hard stage means that the clay is still thirsty for moisture and we need that moisture to allow the image to come off the paper and into the clay. However, we don't want it to be too wet and we also don't want it to be too dry. So that chocolate bar leather hard stage, if you were to touch it, you can feel the coolness of it, yet there's still sort of this um, stiffness quality to it. Like you know that it's not gonna bend like when it's fresh leather hard. So here, that chocolate bar leather hard is also important because it absorbs quickly the moisture of the slip. But that also means that it's more moisture that is being added to the clay. So now what we're looking for is visual, not just by the touch. And that is the, the clay, the slip, has this glossy, wet look to it. It's reflecting light. And we want to wait, we want to go from glossy, wet to more of like a suede, a fondant, talking cake still, uh, a little bit of a fondant where you can see visually that there's a moisture in it. Um, so we wanna get to that stage here. While we wait on this, I'm gonna set this aside so that way this has an opportunity to absorb, we can begin working on our image transfers. Now with the underglazed image transfers, I was mentioning earlier, so I screen print my own using underglaze and in one of my videos I will break that down. It's also described in Graphic Clay on how to get here or if you're not interested in printing your own and you're interested in trying them, again check out easeltransfers.com. Easeltransfers also has custom design options for you there. So what I love about the underglaze transfers, if you're familiar with mono prints, um, the mono printing technique is essentially creating an image brushing or painting an image onto a piece of paper and then transferring it off, off the paper onto something else. That is a mono print. So although it's a screen printed image, it's the process, the act of what we're doing here is actually mono prints. With the underglaze imagery down first, our imagery we work background to foreground. In this plate here, you will, if you can notice that these stars here and that star there is a little bit brighter than the background. That's because I brushed in a different colored slip in those spots. So we can, even with an image, it's all blue, I can use various colored slips to brush in all these different stars, always creating new imagery. So I'm gonna grab a colored slip, which I call, um, 
it's like a straw yellow. You would never be able to really notice that. I mean, if you take a look at the colors here, and maybe there's a slight hue or a shift in pigment and color that happens, um, but label everything. All right, so you can see here that the slip is pretty much on the thick side. With that, it's that, it's, this is probably thicker than a warm milkshake. This may be more like Greek yogurt, I would say. Yeah, or pudding, tapioca, maybe pistachio. Those are my faves. So I'm gonna brush in, it's thicker. I'm gonna do about two generous coats of each. If you are familiar with my style or processes of work, I used to cover the entire page in colored slip when I would transfer. I don't do that anymore. Um, honestly, part of it is a bit unnecessary unless if I'm looking for a texture or more something specific with that application. But to apply the to transfer the image off the paper and onto the object, I don't use all over slip anymore. I just use that flare saw hairspray bottle. This does the trick, and I'll show you how. Painting a few more spots. And at home or in the studio when working on transfers and pots, I'll oftentimes work in a series. So I'll have 10 plates in progress. And then while all the plates are setting up with the layers of slip, I'll do this. I'll start working on all the transfers. Or to help with the process, like if you have a busy lifestyle or you just have a short attention span, I'm guilty of both. Uh, I'll use a damp box, a plastic Rubbermaid container, clear, preferably clear, and I'll put a plaster um, bottom in it about one inch. And either I'll set the plates in it so that way they retain that, mo um, that level of moisture, or after I've put slip on my newsprint transfers and I can't get to them right away, I'll spritz them down with some water and then I'll set these in the damp box so that way they stay moist and ready so when it comes time to transfer. And I can't wait to tell you about the perfect moment for transferring, the sweet spot. All right, so I'm gonna put my second coat of slip. You don't wanna go too thin, it might be brushy. Too thick, you might have uh, issues of it transferring off really well. It's gonna be more like an embossed thickness. So it's finding that happy medium of two generous coats or if you're using a thinner slip, you might be able to do several applications. It really just depends on the thickness of uh, material. And even if your slip went beyond the line a little bit, so I've got a circle right here. I'm just gonna dab some slip on there and I've got another polka dot, put some on there. And you'll see how the slip, now the slip is now in the background. We're working foreground to background. So even if I did another layer of color on top, that would sit behind the blue lines, that would sit behind this yellowish slip that I'm brushing in and then it also would get transferred. All right, let's move on to the orange. My slip is looking pretty good. It's still a little reflective, but it's more of like a moist cake or a fondant look to it or frosting that may have sat on the cake for a couple hours. You can be a little sloppy with your application. It doesn't have to be perfect on the lines. But why I brush on the slip, a few of the things that go on in my mind when working with this process is although I have an idea that I know I'm gonna put these two images onto the plate, 
I, when I cut out the imagery, I don't have it planned to a T. I try to welcome spontaneity within different parts of my process so that way the work is always, for me, it remains engaging. I like to have a dialogue with the work. I like to set up little opportunities of spontaneity and play. And when I peel off or when I apply this imagery onto the plate, I'm now working with a different composition, a composition that I sort of had an idea of what I would have, but when the reality presents itself of the outcome, then I get to engage with that. It's a whole nother part of the conversation. So I also will try to uh, work sponta uh, spontaneously at times. Maybe I've got this yellow stars going in. I know that this background is going to be a blue slip. That background is going to be an orange slip. What if I had a nice rich pink reddish slip and I just colored in one of the stars? Now we're talking about design elements um, and different sort of um, art principles, etc. So give yourself moments of spontaneity. Give yourself permission to play. Try new things. Doesn't come out right. It's, it's just as important to know what not to do again or what just not to do at all, but now you've got more information about your process. Being present with your mind as you're working, being able to observe yourself think, uh, being outside yourself to observe how you work. Do you work loose? Do you work tight? Do you work better under a tight deadline or time frame? Do you need to set an alarm for yourself? You've got like 10 minutes to get this done, go. What decisions do you make? So if I even had all the time in the world to paint every single one of these stars, I know I'm going to get a different look, but that also means that there's more time going into that. What, what can I get done that's still exciting in less amount of time? Um, so play with those sort of things in your studio as well. Let's do one more star. Eh, you know what, let's not do one more star. Here we'll do three, two, it's an odd number. I feel a little bit more safe with odd numbers. It's a little bit more exciting. We don't always have to be uh, balanced, symmetrical. So why this sets up, so the same thing that we're looking for on the plate is what we're looking for the slip on the paper. What we want is a suede-like fondant look. The slip has structure, it has integrity to itself. What we don't want is for the slip to dry. What happens when slip dries on newspaper? It flakes off. So the underglaze image is able to stay onto the paper because of what we add to the underglaze and the underglaze also has um, some gum um, a part of the commercial underglaze. So that will naturally stay on the paper. That's one of the things that I love about image transfers. I can print a ton in, a, in an hour and then hold on to that stock and use it over the years. Um, where with the slip, I need to keep it hydrated. I need to keep it moist. I'll put, I'll use it in a damp box. I'll spritz the Flaresol hairspray uh, water onto it. So while the slip is starting to get a bit dry, the plate is getting much closer. Now there's really hardly any high reflection. So this is the stage that's really important that we want it to be that suede leather hard look, but now we go into the, is it the touch? Is it tacky? Is it not tacky? If it's tacky to the touch, you could apply your image to it if the image is at the right stage. Um, but what I find to be the sweet spot is when it's, it looks like it's fondant and if you touch it, slip doesn't release onto your finger. You might leave a little fingerprint, but it does not release, the slip does not release off your finger. I'm going to go into the center of the plate uh, where it's probably going to be the softest. The rim seems to dry out a little bit faster than the rest. And I'm leaving a fingerprint, but there is no slip on my finger. So that tells me that the plate is ready. Now, the images aren't quite there yet. Let's get the images there. This will hold for probably about five minutes or so, so we're, we're safe there. So let's grab our Flare Salt hairspray bottle, and I'm going to spritz the back of the image first, then the front. If I was to spritz the front and then lay it down and then spray the back, 
any residue, any clay dust, anything that may be on your surface that gets on your paper, that's gonna to transfer too. So let's spray the back. We're gonna do both, even though one's not going on just yet. We'll just maintain the moisture. And now we'll spray the front. Why do we spray the front? Why do we spray the back? Let's begin with the back first. Because when I screen print these underglaze image transfers on a newsprint, I screen print three layers. So we wanna make sure that the moisture is actually absorbing into all of those layers of underglaze. So by spritzing the back of the paper, um, that reassures us that the image itself is full of water, full of moisture, so that way it will release off the paper. If we just spray the front and not the back, Sometimes um, you'll notice that you'll get like these little dry spots. That means that the water is not absorbing in those and you're not gonna get a clean release. So we wanna spray the front, spray, uh, sorry, spray the back, spray the front, let it sit. We need to let it sit just like we allow the slip on the plate to sit. Having this resting on a drywall board, the drywall board is gonna help speed up uh, that, 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 con that moisture being absorbed. And the same thing that we want here is what we had with the plate. I don't want to apply this image until the slip gets back to having that um, fondant look to it. Right now it's still super reflective. The underglaze image, however, so it's still reflective. Hopefully you are able to see light reflecting off the paper. We wanna wait just a little bit longer. It's definitely still reflective on the stars in there. So when this is not tacky to the touch, this just looks like it has that suede look, almost like no water reflection. It's perfect. This is when the two will stick together really well. A lot of times I get the question, do I have to use slip to transfer the image off the paper and onto the, um, the object? Tr always try, always test. So with that, some clay bodies, like if you were to throw a couple mugs, try different clay bodies if you do. The reason for being a some clay material or recipes, the clay may be a little bit tighter, may not be as tacky. Um, sometimes clay is just, uh, just it, it doesn't absorb slips as well as some others might. So always test with your, with your transfers first. Um, get it wet, get a little tacky. That tackiness is a time where it grabs a hold of the moisture of the image. I like using slips because I always feel that it's a fail proof. So we're there with the paper. There's a little bit of moisture happening, but that's going to absorb into the plate. That is why the red rib is really important. So let's stick them off to the side. As long as I keep spritzing the blue, because we still have to apply the blue slip. Because what we're doing here is we're getting, this side is yellow, but how do we get a second layer of imagery on there as well with a clean edge? That's where we use the newsprint, both as a transfer and as a resist. I want my slip spots to be on the plate. And I'm gonna start by pressing near the center and working my way out. Now using my red rib, doing the same. The paper will wrinkle. It is a part of the process that I honestly just take, it, um, take advantage of. I like how the paper, the tool, uh, that the marks that it leaves. And so I embrace the wrinkles. I think for me, what the joy comes from that is not just a sign of process and how process lends a part of the composition as well, but so much of inspiration or influence 
is not just graphic design and pattern, but fabric and how clothes, clothes that are rich with pattern, how they will fold over themselves, but also wrapping paper, thinking like birthday parties and Christmas, like under the tree when you have all of those different types of wrapping paper and you get the folds and the creases and how our, our minds make sense of the pattern through the folds. Like we know the big picture, but how our brains try to process that information, I love that's what wrinkles do for me. How it folds over the body, So once I've gone over with the red, as the water, as the moisture starts to absorb into the clay, you will see that the newsprint paper itself will start to become more of a dry look. That's, letting, that's, that's a great sign to go then with your yellow red. This is the burnish. The red sort of massages it into place. The red rib helps you move moisture out, helps move air bubbles out, and just sticks it into place. It's, it's like a nice light kiss, where the yellow is a nice heavy massage. That's what's gonna push the underglaze into place. And I'm being, I'm being pretty aggressive, but not enough where it's gonna tear the paper. Speaking of tearing the paper, I find that the yellow rib is as hard as you need to go. And granted, Mud Tools creates a green rib, a blue rib. They're a little bit more of a harder durometer. Um, they can be a little bit too abrasive when it comes to the paper and the paper pulp uh, on the transfer. It tears it down. And I find that when I do this process with like newspaper, uh, like the Wall Street Journal or something, so much of that material has gone through so much stress and chemicals and pressure that even when you get that wet, it like just shreds. Um, um, you can use it, it's a good alternative, but I find that the rough surface newsprint paper is, is ideal for my process. So you don't really want to use wooden ribs with this process, especially metal. I find that it tears it. It doesn't mean that they're not gonna work. I just found that I get more successful results using the yellow Mud Tools rib. So I'm gonna peel back. I'm getting a beautiful release. And now, place it back down. Let's get it in this section, okay. Now, I'm gonna jump on this side with blue. A little shake. A nice soft blue. Now, I have not cleaned out this brush. I used to clean my brush out in between every single color. I don't do that anymore. It's thick slip. And you know what, if a little bit of this color made its way into um, the other color, I call that an area of interest. I think it just adds to the process. You may call it lazy. I call it uh, innovative. So I'm just gonna scrape the slip into its container. When I apply slip to the newsprint, I'm thinking of this newsprint paper now as a stencil. There's that little bit of an edge of where the paper comes into contact. I don't wanna brush into my paper because that might force slip underneath that. I don't think that creates desirable results. I like to start on top of my paper and move away. The opacity of color to prevent the red clay from showing through has already been established with the yellow. So I'm just gonna do two simple coats of blue on top. I do have to wait in between each layer because otherwise if I, if I went on top of this coat with more slip, I'm just moving material around. I need to let this layer absorb and then I can build another layer on top. So you just simply just wait. Maybe check to make sure that your other transfer is doing just fine. I spritz it occasionally here and there, but it's retaining that level, so no stress there. What else could you do while you're waiting for slip to dry? You could check out Instagram. You could follow me at Jason B. Burnett. Um, I like to post things from time to time. Also, you should follow the Archie Bray Foundation and the Archie Bray Education handle as well to find out all the cool things that are going on. So as you're exercising your little thumbs, tap in the little heart um, on my posts and uh, clicking uh, follow as well for the Archie Bray Foundation and education. 
as you're doing that, the next thing you know, you look down, you're like, oh, <laughs> it's ready for another coat. So just like I did before, you can paint every coat the same direction. If you like boy bands, that was a bad joke, one direction. But you could also do multiple. It really just, give it a try. And again, I'm gonna let this coat dry as well. So this is when I would have several series happening at once. I need to wait for this slip to get to that suede, less reflection of the moisture. If I applied this image now and there's all this water content in it that's sitting on the surface of the clay, not yet absorbed, and I go to burnish, I'm just gonna move all that slip around. Think about it like this peanut butter and jelly sandwich made by a six-year-old. They're gonna slather that peanut butter and jelly in there. They, they're not gonna even know when to stop. So when they go to take that first bite, that bread's not absorbing all of that. All that moisture in the contact is trapped in between. So when you apply that pressure, it goes out the sides. That's what's gonna happen here with this. So it's, it's the waiting game. I find with this part of the process, when I teach workshops or I get questions online of I'm not getting a successful transfer, this is this magic moment. And we call this patience. If you don't have patience, even with this part of the process, should you be doing clay? Clay demands a lot of patience. And I also find that clay, for material that becomes functional, we build a very dysfunctional relationship with it. I mean, we give and we give and we give. And you know what? It doesn't always give back. Kiln firings, glazes go wrong, slip fits, um, things don't always sell. I mean, we put our heart and soul into this and what do we get in return other than joy and the challenge? Yeah, still a little wet. So we're, we're still waiting for that slip and because we have a lot of layers of slip there. The skin of the slip looks like it's ready. And as I mentioned with the time before, that tacky or non tack to the touch, what we're looking for is, I get a little bit on my finger. It definitely leaves a fingerprint. That's okay, that's gonna get smoothed out. But that tack there, I'm gonna show you now where this side, it did not come off my finger, this side is, but there's still, an integrity to it, to the slip, that it's not just making a puddle. It's not sopping wet. So I can still put a transfer onto this. I just may not rib as hard or as quickly. The transfer is down on the plate or on the slip. It's on there. There's no repositioning it. That moisture has already made contact. There's no taking it back. So that's another reason why I like setting up for the spontaneity have an idea of where the paper of the orange stars ends and where I'm placing this down. But when it comes to the actual composition, once I release the image, peel the paper away, that's when I'll know what it is that I have to work with. So I'm gonna do a gentle burnish. And I can feel with the moisture of the slip, of the newsprint paper, how the slip is responding underneath. It's just it really just sucked it in. So I can't, I feel confident about being a little bit more aggressive with the red rib. And I'm looking for air bubbles. And where some of the slip was layered will feel, you'll feel sort of an embossed touch. So just be gentle around those areas. Hit it from all different angles. And I'm feeling much better now about going in with the yellow rib. That's where this curve is really nice, is it hits that rim beautifully. Let's give it a look. It's transferring beautifully. Something that I really love here is how some of the image may release back on or stay on the paper and some of it will release onto the slip. There's just like this beautiful 1980s photocopy uh, 
texture to it. And if there was information that was not sticking down, so like maybe a few of the spots in that starburst, I can place this back down because I haven't peeled the paper all the way off. Run it a couple more times and you'll get more off. So I've got the yellow in the stars. I've got a little bit of yellow behind that blue dot. This is just a way of layering with color. Now we're gonna move away the orange. Something that I love about layering paper is using a torn edge instead of a cut edge. We gotta think about line. And you get that with an edge of paper, edge of stencils. Uh, do you use decorative scissors to create a new edge? Beautiful releases on both. And then what is not used, what is, did not peel off the paper, you can continue to use on test tiles or other objects, other odds and ends, refrigerator magnets, make that dollar. So now it's gonna be the decoration part. You can see the similarities of how we're getting from this plate to that plate, so close. This is when I like to have the assistance of a banding wheel. 